What's up guys, Money Hoopla here and welcome back to the channel. We are doing the March update for my net worth. We have a lot of new things uh, in the works here, a lot of things changing. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, before we get started though, however, just to note, I do have a copy of this Google Sheet in the description of this video. Feel free to click that link and it will take you to where you can create your own copy and basically um, use this that I created um, with your own stats, your own categories. And yeah, you can calculate your net worth and keep track of it yourself. So feel free to click that, it's free. And before we get started with the rest of the video, let's hear a quick word from today's sponsor, which is me. Hi guys, if you haven't heard, I now have a Money Hoopla subscriber net worth newsletter. Basically what this means is I will be tracking the net worth of my subscribers who choose to participate. I'm essentially gathering data from the people who enjoy my videos and then seeing how we all stack up against each other, if there's any common trends, any patterns, the average age of the people and how that correlates to their net worth, how much debt people hold, how much assets they have this is what the newsletter is about and i will be setting it out at the end of every quarter and basically it'll have a link to where you can calculate your net worth and then send the information back to me you can do it anonymously as well all you have to do is click the link in the description of this video or any of my videos enter your email and your first name you can use a fake name if you like and yeah i'll be sending out the emails at the end of every quarter so the first one will be going out towards the in the beginning of april for the first quarter of 2023 and yeah any information that you are willing to submit on the form um, everything will be optional there. You can send that in, I will collect the data, and then I will be sending out another email um, probably in May to talk about the results of the submissions. And I will also make a video to talk about um, all my subscribers and their average net worths and everything like that, any interesting insights there. Another benefit of this is it keeps you accountable too. You're gonna be getting these emails every three months to you know, kind of let you know like, hey, it's time to track this and see where you are, to see if you are doing well financially, if you are in a healthy spot. So yeah, I think it'd be really cool and it'll build a sense of community um, in, in us as well as we all try to kind of attain this wealth and move into a better spot financially. So if it's something you're interested in, feel free to click the link below. With that being said, let's get back to the video. All right, so let's jump in with it, starting with the bank accounts here. My first checking account, originally it was 608.57 at the beginning of February. It is now 83.35. I just paid my rent, so yeah, it's very low. Um, just to preface guys, I I had a pretty difficult month in February. I took a lot of time off work. Yeah, so it's not gonna be as great as it was, but you know, that's all part of the journey, right? It's up and down, up and down. Um, so savings number one is also zero. Checking account number two, I have $14.93 in it. I'm just keeping enough because this currently has a $10 monthly maintenance fee if the balance is below 300. So I just keep a little bit of cash in there for that. All right, now this is what kills me. My second savings account was 466.51 in February. It is now 108. 44. Oh God, I know it's just the worst. I had to withdraw some of that money um, just to you know help pay for things because like I said, I didn't work a ton during the last month. So it's a pretty major setback, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it sucks to see, but it is what it is. For checking account number three, which if you remember, that is my um, house savings account. By the way, savings number two is uh, what is my emergency fund savings. And then checking number three is where I'm saving for a house. So that went up, it was originally 151.20 in February it is now 195.25. I contribute 5% from each paycheck into that. All right, so let's move on to the investments. We have a lot of changes here. 401k was just over 2,000. Now it is at $2,146.25. Sorry, 23 cents. By the way, if my keyboard is too clicky, let me know in the comments and I can switch it out for another one. It's a mechanical keyboard, so sorry if it's a little loud. The Roth IRA is at 50.42, just a few cents change there. The individual was at 231.16 in February. It is jumped up quite a bit to 335.91. If you watch my portfolio review weekly series, I've made a few buys in this account over the last month. The HSA um, also went up slightly to 11.98. 34. And lastly, the cash fund, um, I moved, it, I added a lot to it and it was clear close to 200. And then I moved a lot of it into the individual account to buy stocks. So this is now at 4620. I'm building it up again to buy more shares. So that brings our total assets to $4,179 and seven cents. All right, moving on to the liabilities. We do have some changes here. The Apple card went up about a dollar. I paid the minimums, but then I ended up, you know, putting more money on it. Like I said, it was a hard month. Capital One credit card. I'm going to change this to calling it Capital One 
I'm just gonna call it Platinum CC because I now have another credit card with Capital One. So we'll go over that. But the Platinum is uh, did go down a little bit to 434.48. And then let's get rid of this Banfield category since I completely paid that off. We're gonna move the iPhone down and we're gonna type in Quick Silver credit card. So this is a new credit card I got pre-approved for. I, they just sent it to me, um, like the pre-approval thing. I didn't even apply. So, and the limit is $500 and I pretty much maxed it. I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, the good news is now I have um, a $1,500 for my credit limit, um, but I'm utilizing still almost all of it because it was such a hard month. Um, so yeah, it's something I'm gonna have to work on, but I am excited to have like another credit card and hopefully not get this account closed out. Hopefully I can use this responsibly. I know I've already racked up so much, but you know, it's a process and it's something I'm aware that I have a problem with. All right, for the iPhone 13, I did make another payment. Now we are at 702.71, almost below 700 there. And then with my dad, I did not make any payments. So we're still at 4,800, uh, $4,883.49. Our total liabilities is just below $7,000 at $6,962.19. Let's update the credit utilization. We now have the quick silver card. I'm gonna change this to platinum and it's $500 as well so we have a total uh, credit limit of 500 bucks now and we are gonna update this to include e23 which is the Quicksilver card and that brought our credit utilization to 91.73 percent which is a little bit lower than it was before credit score did get an update we were at 564 before now we are at 574 I think it went up a little bit since I got a higher credit limit now but yeah with that being said guys my net worth currently is negative two thousand seven hundred and eighty three dollars and 12 cents which which means my net worth dropped $967.82 month over month from February to March. Let's write this in for the data. All right, updated that in the data chart here. Let's go back to the dashboard and we can see our chart automatically updated. Remember guys, this Google Sheet is free. It's in the description of my video. If you have questions on how to use it when you actually get it on your computer, let me know and I'll definitely help you out. But yeah, we see, you know, it had a, it went up, 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 and then a natural kind of come down. Um, and I think over time it's gonna you know balance but it's still going in a positive direction if we were to put a trend line from you know the very start in august all the way to now march um, we are going positive all right so with this out of the way let's move on to our 2023 goals and see where we stack up this is going to be very depressing but we're going to do it all right for our investments we were at three thousand five hundred and fifty seven dollars and eighty six cents at the end of january now at the end of february beginning of march we are at three thousand seven hundred and seventy seven dollars and ten cents which is below our goal of four thousand dollars a little bit more than two hundred dollars below our goal let's move on to the emergency savings savings goal uh, before we were at $466.51. Now we are at 108.44, which is very, very below our goal of $500. And then with our house savings goal, we were at 151.20 before, and now we were at 195.25, which is below our goal of $380, a little bit less than $200 below the goal. Now looking at all this, it looks pretty bad, right? Like we are you know, kind of falling behind in February already. Um, but let me just break down why I'm still optimistic on all of this. Basically, I am moving in July to a different city that is way cheaper. I'm actually moving in with one of my siblings and I'm gonna be paying almost 25% of the current rent I'm paying now. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm actually starting college again uh, next week. This will be the third time I'm going to college, but I actually have something interesting that I'm going to be studying and I'm hoping that it works out for me. And so yeah, I'm moving in uh, when my lease is up in July. I currently, with utilities and everything, I end up paying like 1150 a month for a studio apartment, which is insane. So I'm really gonna cut down my expenses there. So all that to say, I will be spending way, 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 way less on housing expenses. You know, right now I spend like 50% of my income on housing, which is insane. And so starting in July and then through the rest of the year, the last six months of the year, I will have so much more free cash to um, put towards my goals and everything. And so basically what I'm thinking is basically until starting at the end of July or end of June, rather, we're gonna see me lagging quite a bit behind my goals. But then in the second half of the year, I think really catch up and we have a 
good potential of reaching two, if not all three of my goals here. I could either sound really stupid or really smart um, when we look at back at this video, but I think the most important thing is to keep an optimistic attitude, track it month to month, and then see where we can make changes, where we're making mistakes, um, what really needs to be altered in a major way. And so I recognize that, you know, that my housing cost is just destroying my finances and I need to get it under control and I need to move out of here. My lease isn't up till July, so I'm kind of stuck until then, but I'm glad I realized this before I signed on uh, for another lease because they'll be asking me soon. So yeah, with all that to say, um, you know, it's kind of a rough month, but you know, we got through it. And at the end of the day, we are not hiding from the numbers. We are tracking everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment below. I would love to interact with you guys. Let me know how your journey is going. Are you still doing the net worth stuff? Are you tracking it? How often do you track it? Is it moving in the positive direction or negative direction? Alrighty guys. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment below. I love interacting with you guys. Let me know how your current journey is going. Thank you so much for watching this video. We will do another net worth update in about a month from now. Thanks guys. Have a good one. Bye.